Pretty much every physics major has to take at least one course in programming in their undergraduate career. Pretty much every physics major also has to take a course in computational physics, which is where you apply your coding knowledge to solve real physics problems. Now, I don't think anyone would argue that coding can't be useful to solve real physics problems outside of academia. In fact, I had to use it for my last research project, I have to use it for my senior thesis, and I'll have to use it again for my next summer research project. But do you ever use your coding knowledge or apply coding to solve any problems in your other physics classes? That's what I'm going to talk about in this video, so let's get started. Now the coding language that I'm most familiar with is Python, though I am also taking a course in C++. And I've used Python extensively for, like I said, my research internship as well as my senior thesis. Now after acquiring a deeper and deeper understanding of how Python works and getting more familiar with coding in general, I realized also that I wasn't really applying it to any of my other physics courses as much as I thought I would. I would honestly say the most that I've used Python for for my other courses has been if I found the answer analytically already and I want to plot it out to see what it looks like and see if it makes sense. What I'm getting at with that is that Python has been really useful for analyzing data that I've already acquired, but I haven't really used it to solve problems in my classes, whether it be e &M or quantum mechanics, stat mech, anything like that. However, there has been one, I don't even know if I would call it a programming language, it's more of a software that I've used a huge amount in my physics classes, and I don't know how I would have gone about doing those classes without it. What I'm talking about, you might have guessed, is Mathematica. The thing that's made Mathematica more useful to me in my physics classes versus Python, or if you're more familiar with C++ or something like that, is that it's a lot easier to keep things as a functional representation in Mathematica. So if I wanted to integrate or differentiate something in Python, say I define a function and I take derivatives, well I can store all those values in lists or arrays and I can plot out the results and say, that looks like a Bessel function or that looks like a sine function or something along those lines but I'm not at the level yet to where I know how to fit the data to a function uh, in, in that programming language. Mathematica doesn't really have that problem for me. It, it's something that you can have some function, you can take integrals, you can take definite or indefinite integrals, meaning limits of integration exist or don't. Uh, you can take nth degree derivatives. It's just it's super user-friendly, and if you ever want to learn how to do something in it, like integrals or derivatives, it's usually just a Google away. For example, what you're going to be seeing here is me defining a function. I'm going to start integrating it, and then I'm going to take derivatives of it, and then we're also going to plot the results. And it's just, it's, it's so user-friendly, and it's a great way to solve problems that aren't supposed to be testing you on the math. So being able to use Mathematica as a tool to quickly calculate things like integrals or derivatives has just been super, super useful for me. Now fortunately for people that go to ODU, we get uh, free licensing for Mathematica through the university, so we don't have to pay for it. But I understand that Mathematica is really expensive on its own if you're trying to pay for it yourself. Now tethering this back to the research stuff that I've done, I've obviously used, if you've watched any of my videos, you obviously have seen that I've used a lot of Python in solving these problems. Typically what I do is when I start writing a code to solve a problem in Python, is I'll solve an easier version of the problem in Mathematica and check that I can reproduce that result in Python. Then, once I realize that I've got the overall code working, I've got the, the subroutine or whatever producing results that are accurate, then I'll, I'll start to get away from Mathematica and actually use my code to solve the harder problem. But either way, I, I hope you guys found this video useful. Programming is a huge deal in physics. It's super useful when it comes to research projects or senior theses and definitely real-world applications. Some problems can't be solved on paper. Some problems need to be solved numerically. And that's where programming comes in. But when you're an undergraduate physics major, you're not normally ready for all of those problems that can't be solved on paper. They want to make sure that you understand basic physics first. And usually all that stuff can be analytic, which is why you might not see all of these programming problems in your other physics classes. Let me know if there's any other programming languages or other experiences that you've used for your, uh, your other physics courses. Let me know in the comments section. I'll see you guys there.